Fact 1. Earl Nelson's parents both passed away due to syphilis by the time he was two years old, leaving Nelson in the care of his elderly and extremely religious grandmother. Nelson's strong religious upbringing remained a pervasive influence in his life, and he obsessively read the Book of Revelation as a teenager. Fact 2. Nelson was only 10 years old when he was hit by a fast-moving trolley while racing across the street. In addition to a permanent new hole in his temple, the accident left Nelson in a coma for days. After waking up, he suffered severe headaches, hallucinations, and blackouts for the rest of his life as a result of the injury. By the end of his life, Nelson claimed the pain in his head was so powerful he couldn't even walk. Fact 3. Sometime in late 1917, he enlisted in the US military, but deserted it after six weeks. He repeated this pattern on several occasions, enlisting in different military branches under different names before deserting. In 1918, Nelson was committed to the Napa State Mental Hospital after behaving oddly and erratically during one of his brief stints in the US Navy. A Navy psychologist noted that Nelson was living in a constitutional psychotic state. Fact 4. On May 19, 1921, Nelson posed as a plumber to enter the residence at 1519 Pacific Avenue in San Francisco and attempted to molest 12-year-old resident Mary Summers in the basement. His attempt was thwarted when she screamed and attracted help from her elder brother. Nelson fled, but was captured hours later while riding a trolley. At a competency hearing, he was deemed dangerous and recommitted to Napa State Mental Hospital. He would escape again on two different occasions before being discharged from the institution in 1925. Fact 5. In undertaking his crimes, Nelson had a modus operandi. Most of his victims were middle-aged landladies, many of whom he would find through room for rent advertisements. Posing as a mild-mannered and charming Christian drifter, Nelson used the pretext of renting a room in the landladies' boarding houses to make contact with them before attacking. Each of his victims were killed via strangulation, and many were raped after death. Nelson murdered at least 22, and as many as 26 women, almost all of them landlords except for one 14-year-old girl and the newborn baby of one of his older victims. Despite a lack of modern transportation, Nelson managed to take victims in California, Oregon, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, and then finally Manitoba, Canada where he was caught and brought to justice. Nelson was a serial necrophiliac in addition to a killer, sexually violating the corpses of most women he killed. Fact 6. Nelson happened to visit a barber the same day he took his last victim's life. Noticing blood in Nelson's hair, the barber informed police, who soon apprehended him and sent him to jail. Immediately, Nelson picked the prison locks and tried to escape via train, only to discover that same train was loaded with Winnipeg police officers ready to send him back to jail. Fact 7. Nelson acquired a job working as a janitor at St. Mary's Hospital, using the pseudonym Evan Louis Fuller. There, he met 60-year-old Mary Martin, an administrative worker. The two began to date, and were married in August 1919. Their marriage, however, was short-lived, as Nelson made her life a living hell, three, with his jealous rages, bizarre sexual demands, religious delusions, and increasingly violent behavior, leading her to separate from him after only six months. Fact 8. A jail guard who oversaw Nelson throughout his trial noted that he had become particularly obsessed with a certain biblical passage from the book of Proverbs, which read, My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also leath in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. Fact 9. Nelson admitted to his crimes, bluntly telling reporters, I only do my lady killings on Saturday nights. However, he would subsequently retract his admission and claim he was innocent. Upon an interview with the Manitoba Free Press shortly after his arrest, he said, I'm charged with two murders. But I'm not the one who done it. 
When asked about the various persons in the US and Canada who had positively identified him as the strangler, he simply responded, all of M are wrong. Fact 10. The evidence against Nelson was so overwhelming, his lawyers couldn't even plead his innocence, though the man himself repeatedly tried doing so, arguing a man of his faith couldn't do what they said he did. Instead, the lawyers used these claims of innocence as part of an insanity plea, in addition to testimony from his ex-wife and aunt, both of whom were convinced Nelson was insane. Nelson was executed by hanging at 7.30 a.m. on January 13, 1928, at the Vaughan Street Jail in Winnipeg. His final words were, I am innocent. I stand innocent before God and man. I forgive those who have wronged me and ask forgiveness of those I have injured. God have mercy.